I agree entirely. I think that's the attitude most Americans have lost. You know, they've lost that 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 sense of patriotism to individual rights and whatnot. I think one thing you're seeing that's been happening for the past several years now is slowly but surely more and more American people are starting to wake up to the Constitution, starting to wake up to the Bill of Rights, to their their natural rights, to what you know they have a right to and what the government doesn't have a right to. The government doesn't have a right to anything. That government has privileges. We, the people, have rights. We give government privileges, and we can take those privileges away anytime we're brave enough to do so. The Declaration of Independence says that we, the people, have a right to alter or abolish the government. I don't know. What does abolish mean to you? Uh, you know, to me, it means we can get rid of it completely and start over from scratch. And I've had people argue, no, Michael, we can't do that. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. We could never abolish the Constitution. Uh, excuse me. Ever hear of the Articles of Confederation? Yeah. What was that? Well, that was the first Constitution for the United States. And those con Articles of Confederation still around? No. We threw the Articles of Confederation in the garbage can, and we basically trashed them and came up with the Constitution. The, co the preamble to the Constitution says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. Well, more perfect than what? More perfect than the Articles of Confederation that we just threw the garbage. So we've already... We've already taken the supreme law of the land and trashed it. We've done that once. We could theoretically do it again. Now, frankly, I don't think the Constitution is all that bad. It's we're just not using it. It's like yep. an, um, an umbrella will not protect you unless you open it up and hold it over your head. <laughs> If you're standing there in the rain, soaked to the skin, going, "Oh my gosh, we gotta get, you know, gotta get a new um umbrella." Uh, where is your umbrella? Well, it's under the seat of the car. What the hell is it doing there? I mean, if the if you leave your umbrella under the seat of the car, it's not going to keep you dry. You got to learn it. You got to use it. You got to open it up and hold it up over your head. If you want the Constitution to work, you got to read it. You got to understand it. You got to study it, and damn it, you got to defend it. I agree entirely, Michael. Michael Badnerick is my guest. His website is constitutionpreservation.org. And we're about to go to break, Michael. And uh, after the break, I want to go into, in the final segments we have left, uh, the Articles of Confederation, because I have a lot of questions about that. I want to know why exactly it failed. So we'll talk about that with Michael Badnerick. Coming up right after this, you're listening to Freedom Files on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Going into the final segment, you are listening to Freedom Files live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Our website is FreedomFiles.us. We're joining the final segment once more by Michael Badnerick, 2004 Libertarian presidential candidate. His website constitutionpreservation.org and Michael before the break I was asking about the uh, Articles of Confederation because a lot of people out there are pro Articles of Confederationists and I want to know exactly what were, what were the flaws in the uh, in the articles well there were no flaws in the articles per se the American Revolution had everybody you know scrambling back and forth we're trying to fight for freedom after the uh, American Revolution, the 13 colonies owed money to France and Spain. France and Spain had, had loaned us money. France physically helped us in the battle. And at the end of the war, not surprisingly, France and Spain were expecting us to pay back the loan. I mean, that's the definition of a loan. Well, the 13 colonies were going, you know, we're busy growing tobacco and, you know, enjoying our newfound liberty. We'll, uh, We'll get back to you later. <laughs> and so as, you know, France and state, Spain started putting more pressure on us, the 13 colonies did what most governments do when they need money. They started printing it. And each of the 13, you know, New York had money, Pennsylvania money, uh, Virginia money, all these 13 different kinds of money. And they were printing money out of thin air. 
as we all know, that causes hyperinflation. And so the people said, look, we love liberty, we love freedom, it's a great idea, glad we got it, but the economy sucks. You know, nobody's willing to buy anything because they know the paper money is not going to be worth anything. So go to Philadelphia, add a paragraph, delete a sentence, modify the Articles of Confederation, and fix it. In steps Alexander Hamilton, who was a monarchist. He did not like King George III, but he thought that King George Washington would be a really good idea. And basically, he thought that most people are too stupid to make their own decisions. They need smart politicians like Alexander Hamilton to make those decisions for you. And long story short, Alexander Hamilton showed up in Philadelphia early and basically sabotaged the Articles Confederation, threw those in the garbage, and we came up with the Constitution. And a lot of people argue that the Constitution either was it was never designed to protect our property, or perhaps it wasn't capable of doing that. And I point uh, point you to Lysander Spooner, who makes me look like a moderate. I mean, if you think I'm over the top, you need to go to the internet and find Lysander Spooner. His article is "The Constitution of No Authority." and read that huh. you will think that I am just a pussycat compared to Lysander Spooner wow you gotta see a couple of uh, uh, things coming up don't you Michael you got a couple of engagements I have a lot of things coming up I, my goal is to teach my constitution class every single weekend this year um, you know I'm not quite there but I've got a lot of things you can go to my website constitutionpreservation.org and on the calendar menu there's something called a class registration page and that's a quick and dirty list of everything I'm going to be doing everywhere I'm going to be if I'm teaching a class you can register for it there um, but then there's also a calendar you can look to see how it looks on the calendar and if you would like me to come and speak to your group and my calendar is empty, you can give me a call. Uh, my phone number is on the website, and I would be happy, 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 happy to come out and talk to you and your group, talk to you about rights versus privileges, dem democracy versus republic, get everybody fired up. My job is lighting the fires of liberty one heart at a time. That's the only way you can do it. Exactly. And in the final moments we have together, Michael, uh, what, what is like the one or a couple of major concerns going on in the United States and around the world that really bother you right now? The economy. Nothing bothers me more than the economy, which is going to collapse. I mean, we are like on the Titanic, standing there at the rail, looking at the propellers. And people go, God, I wonder what's going to happen. You don't have to be a, an admiral in the Navy to know this boat is going to sink. You know, but people are just dancing and moving the deck chairs around. In the 1920s, the Federal Reserve was pumping money into the economy. That's why they were known as the Roaring Twenties. Everybody was making money hand over fist. Where did that money come from? Well, we were printing it. In uh, 1929, they started to contract the money supply. They, they stopped making additional loans. They took the money out of circulation. And so, you know, men in the United States didn't get lazy and just stay home. You know, businesses didn't run out of work. There was no money to pay anybody. It's like, James, uh, I'd like you to work for me. You want to do that for a year or two, and then maybe I'll pay you? Well, that no, sounds like nobody, a great deal. <laughs> nobody, Nobody's going to work for free. And that's what the Great Depression was about when they rapidly, rapidly contracted the money supply. The Federal Reserve doubled the money supply between 2000 and 2004. They doubled the money supply again between 2004 and 2006. In 2006, the Federal Reserve stopped publishing 
the value of M3. M3 is basically a calculation of how much paper money there is floating around out there. And the only reason they would stop publishing that value is because, well, they couldn't calculate it fast enough. They don't want us to know how fast they are pumping money into the system. Well, the economy works like a guillotine. Pretty much, inflation. and it's... And it's slicing us up, unfortunately. Michael, unfortunately, we are all out of time, but it was a great show. I look forward to having you up really soon. Michael Badnerick's website, of course, is constitutionpreservation.org. Thank you, Michael, for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And uh, feel free and look at his website, constitutionpreservation.org. Uh, see if he's in your area or come to your area and request him because, you know, we need to educate more and more people about the Constitution.